Welcome to whoever's listening, either on the recording or uh, in person. Uh, my name's Paul Tester, as you can see, as you can see on the screen with my photo from a couple of years ago, and I had a little bit more hair. Um, and uh, uh, I'm uh, Church Mission Society's manager in Latin America. Um, so I live in Lima, Peru, with my family, and um, I'm here just to share a little bit on this theme. So this is why I hope you're here, which is with Jesus, with each other to the edges, um, which you know, if you look on our website, you'll notice there's also CMS's new strap line. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why uh, why that. Um, and also going to talk a little bit about, or quite more significantly, I'm going to talk about the indigenous peoples in Latin America and CMS's work with them and, and how we are uh, developing that together with people, indigenous peoples in the region. So I um, hope that will be of interest. Um, and um, I think I want to start just by explaining a little bit about why we're using the, th the, th the words edges, because sometimes, you know, you, you can, that can be a bit of a, a, a surprise. But um, we, as we were kind of reflecting over the last couple of years and renewing CMS's vision for mission, um, one of the Bible passages that really spoke to us and inspired us in that was from Mark 4.35 on through to 5.20, which is about uh, Jesus uh, taking his disciples and saying to them, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Uh, and and uh, going over to the other side of the lake um, meant a whole load of things. Um, they were in uh, their own comfortable context. Uh, they were in Jewish territory. They were in a place they knew. Um, going over to the other side of the lake was going to Gadarene territory. And when they get there, also um, they, they meet with the uh, demon-possessed man uh, and Jesus uh, casts out the, the demon. And, uh, and then the man on the other side says, I want to come back with you, Jesus, and follow you there. And Jesus says, no, you can't come back. You need to stay and you need to go and tell people about what, what what's happened here today. Um, and that sense of um, going to places that are uncomfortable, that are difficult, where people aren't following Jesus, um, uh, really spoke to us about what is on our heart as an organization and, and as, as people with a, with a heart for mission. So that idea of crossing a lake or going to the other side of the lake really sort of inspired us and spoke to us. Um, and that's kind of then born through into, into the vision that, uh, that we've um, uh, renewed, if you like, which is there on the screen, our world made new through the love of God as we follow Jesus to the edges. And this idea of going to the edges, following Jesus' is called to um, the places where it's difficult to be, um, where, where, where it's difficult to follow Jesus. Um, as we go there, uh, as we follow that call, we also want to see uh, the world transformed in God's power, in God's love. And, uh, and that's reflected there. And so well, as we go through with that heart, what we hope to see as is illustrated in a sense in the, in the story from, the, from Mark's gospel, is that people come to encounter Jesus. Um, you know, that's our, our first heart and that they choose to follow him, that they become his disciples. But also within that, the new communities of disciples um, grow within the cultures in a, in a way that is contextualized to that culture, that is natural to that culture. Um, and that, and then that, that mission at those edges in those places is multiplied and actually that people go out uh, within their own context and share uh, their, their faith in Jesus with others and, and disciples are made in a, in a movement of, of mission. And in a sense, like I say, the man was sent out in his own context, having had that encounter with Jesus, wanting to follow him, is sent out to share the good news in his own context. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go through all of this. I already apologised in the Spanish version. Um, but I, what I did want to highlight is just a few thoughts about how we do, how we engage in mission. If you're really interested, you can go back and look in the recording later. Um, so I won't go through it all. But what? So a few points. One of them is that Jesus calls us into His mission. So uh, uh, our, our, our starting point, if you like, for the for the, for our mission is is that God calls us to do it. Um, and actually, uh, one of the challenges that we were sharing earlier amongst the group in the Spanish group was also around how um, actually uh, the challenge perhaps should be, has Jesus called you to stay? Um, because actually we're all called uh, to make disciples. And the question is, where do we do that? So um, we believe that God calls us into his mission 
uh, that its heart is about sharing Jesus. We believe that it's, it needs to be relevant to the context, that it's shaped by the context, but also that the gospel, uh, when it's uh, embodied in the culture, transforms people's lives and the culture around it. Um, and, and as we, uh, that calling to go to the places that are edges, if you like, those places that are difficult, and as we go there, we want to go not just proclaiming the good news, but being the good news in the way that we actually embody that mission as well, embody uh, the gospel in the way that we live. So we go with a humble posture, wanting to learn and to listen as well as to share and to give. Um, and we do that in partnership with people local to the context, with others who want to go to those edges. We want to build uh, uh, networks and community uh, where we have a shared heart, shared partnerships for um, sharing the gospel in those contexts. Like I say, if you want to read more, you can go back and watch the recording. Um, but really, what um, um, some of those, just to give some sort of examples to what, what the sorts of context that we're talking about when we talk about edges. And I, Andy, you'll be um, very familiar with this. The others maybe um, can uh, will hear something new. Um, that uh, some of the examples around the world in Africa, we're looking at making disciples in conflict contexts where it's just really difficult just even to, to, to live, let alone um, to follow Jesus. Uh, working with CMS Africa, our sister organization, um, working uh, with a, a network amongst the uh, Middle East and North Africa unreached peoples, people from um, Muslim backgrounds, uh, and seeing uh, growth in, the, in, in believers in, in, in Jesus there and the discipleship of those believers there. In, in, in uh, Asia, in uh, uh, South Asia, we're working with Asia CMS, another sister organization amongst unreached peoples in those contexts, particularly in areas like Nepal and India um, in the South of Asia. And then for us in Latin America, um, a focus around indigenous communities. I'm going to go into that in more depth in a second. But just to highlight that also we're very aware that um, within our own context, CMS is a, is a, a an age old, uh, 220 plus uh, year old organization from Britain, um, born out of a revival and a renewal movement within the church in, in the UK. Um, we're very aware that in our own context, uh, that there are many who are beyond the reach of the church as it is at the moment. And actually we're also developing our work, mission work within the British context or contexts, um, which, uh, which are those now the majority of the population who are, um, effectively without contact with, with anyone who would um, be a follower of Jesus. And so um, there are there are many others that we are exploring, um, but those are some of them. So I just want to highlight from different places around the world. So I want to dig into a little bit um, into uh, doing mission together amongst indigenous peoples in Latin America as an example of trying to embody some of those things that we've just talked about and just shared. Uh, so that uh, just to give you a kind of a flavor of that and also to see uh, about how we are um, uh, developing that now. Having said about talking about how we're developing it now, I'm just going to give you a very brief history lesson. <laughs> I just want to show you this because it's um, it, it shows the change and the change of shape in, in mission over the kind of periods of which, over which um, uh, CMS and SAMS before it in, in Britain, um, uh, SAMS merged with CMS and became part of CMS in the USA, CMS merged with SAMS, as far as I understand it, became SAMS. And so um, we're, we're, SAMS USA would be a, a kind of a, 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 a sister organization too for, for CMS. So SAMS began uh, the South American Mission Society for us in, uh, in Latin America with mission work amongst indigenous peoples. And these are some of the faces of some of the pioneers of that work. Uh, for some, it would be familiar. Um, the guy on the left is kind of the a guy called Alan Gardner, who, together with his team, um, died on a beach in Tierra del Fuego, the very south of, of Argentina, as, what is Argentina now, trying to reach the Yagan people uh, right in the, in the southern tip of the continent. Um, he died in that attempt, but actually his death inspired a movement, a mission to uh, the indigenous peoples of Latin America. And so some of those who followed in his steps, Wade Sterling, went back to the same place and actually managed to establish a mission work there amongst the Yagan people. Barbara Grubb was sent then as a pioneer into the Chaco that is now in Paraguay. Um, uh, Charles Sadler is a pioneer in uh, in Chile uh, amongst the Mapuche. And so um, now, and of course, all of the faces there um, are, 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 are quite clearly, well, they're all British 
men of a certain age, uh, all white, rather like myself. <laughs> um, uh, and that's the kind of the, 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 the face of, of mission back in 1850s through to 1900s, early 1900s. You know, that was, that was the kind of um, situation as it was. But since then, we've seen uh, a growth uh, in the indigenous church uh, and the way that mission has, um, has, has been embodied in those contexts. And so over the years, um, through after the pioneer kind of first contact work, uh, Bible translation and uh, the photos of the um, uh, Southern Enclet uh, Bible being uh, presented back here about six, seven years ago. Um, and then, uh, uh, and, and we continue with uh, Bible translation work amongst the Torah. The Old Testament is being completed uh, over the next couple of years, we pray, uh, amongst the Torah in Northern Argentina and the Chaco there. And so, um, uh, and so that work continues. Um, healthcare and education have been uh, particularly at the beginning of a lot of this mission work was a priority for the missionaries who were serving there. Um, I know in uh, Araucanía that a lot of the uh, schools and hospitals in that region were started by missionaries. They're now part of the, the, the state kind of provision in those contexts. Um, and over the years, um, uh, the, uh, the, with the kind of encroachment, if you like, of outside the outside world, one of the big challenges has been for indigenous peoples maintaining their, their, their traditional lands. Uh, and so that has taken different shapes in different places, but the church has been part of um, the advocacy for indigenous peoples in the context. Uh, you can see the map, and this is from Northern Argentina, looking at the, uh, the, the, the areas where Wichi people have, have lived for, uh, for, 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 for a long, long time, um, but now facing the kind of encroachment of agriculture, cattle ranching, uh, uh, business and, uh, and industry um, and, and tied up within that is also that area around creation care and, and indigenous peoples have an awful lot to teach us um, about uh, uh, kind of the care for uh, the world that God has created uh, and how to uh, uh, steward that and so all of this has been going on um, over a number of years and now the faces of um, mission uh, in indigenous peoples context looks rather different. So these are some of the people that CMS are connected with. Some will be familiar faces to people here. Um, uh, so Mirna is Wichi um, in, in what is uh, Argentina. Juel is now will be muy, uh, muy going into Spanish. Very familiar to, to Russ and Heidi in, in, in Araucanía. He's Mapuche. And then the couple on the right are actually Latino. So they're not indigenous, but Agustin. Uh, is in Paraguay working amongst indigenous peoples in, in the chapel of Paraguay and Marcos is a, a younger lad in Argentina um, kind of being trained up to serve in mission amongst the Wichi um, and it's just a reflection of <laughs> this is going to go to Hawaii yeah, huh? um, <laughs> this is a, a, just an example of some of the people who are who are now um, if you like taking on that mantle of mission in those contexts so as we as we kind of uh, look to think about and reflect upon where are we going in mission uh, now. This Bible verse has been particularly uh, close to us as we've kind of been discussing and, and, and in dialogue with indigenous peoples in the region, the leadership of the church. Uh, so um, it come it was it, it shared by um, by an indigenous leader in, in northern Argentina who recognised that you know as you open up areas of the Chaco and, and literally cut roads in or ways into into the into the forest um, that you as you look back you can see the path from where you come but also you need to stop and take time to think about where you should be going and, and Jeremiah 6 16 says stand at the crossroads and look ask for the ancient paths ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls and as it was shared last night this bible verse was also there uh, and they read the last bit, which also says, and you said, no, we will not walk in it. <laughs> now, our, our, our hope and our prayer is that we might do differently to that and to be attentive to what God says and to walk in the good way. And so that's what we are effectively doing. We are taking a moment to stand at the crossroads and say the situation, the context is it has changed. But we believe that there are still uh, challenges in terms of following Jesus and also in terms of the transformation of that context where the gospel is being shared. And so we're reflecting together about which is the right way, which is the good way to walk in it, and then praying that we will then move on and walk in that way. 
just to share a little bit about the context and um, just talking a little bit to, to Rhonda earlier about kind of prayers and uh, for the, an intercession for these sort of contexts, just some kind of thoughts on some of the contexts amongst indigenous peoples and some of the reasons why um, why we might consider this a, a difficult place to be or an edge. Um, and the first one is that, um, of course, indigenous peoples in Latin America were there a long time before um, uh, Europeans arrived there. And over the first kind of roughly 300 years, um, the population of indigenous peoples in the region was reduced by 95%. You know? So that's, I mean, that's an absolutely shocking figure, um, mainly through disease being spread by the colonizers, but also because indigenous peoples were effectively second, like, second class citizens um, uh, and often even considered sort of, in, in some cases, subhuman. But we do believe that indigenous lives matter. Um, that, however, that injustice and those challenges still exist today. Um, and so these sort of figures being shared are, are pulled out of uh, United Nations reports. Um, this is not sort of necessarily from, from our particular experience, but it's reflected in our own experience in these contexts. So uh, as it says there, life expectancy for indigenous peoples in places like Brazil and Venezuela um, are 20 years less 20 years less than the rest of the population. Uh, infant, mo infant mortality is three to five times um, higher. Um, uh, in the Wichi context, which is northern Argentina, it's saying 0.5 percent. It's the entire percentage of, of Wichi communities have even access to higher education, so beyond secondary education. Um, and actually, within that percentage, it's even less that would actually may take up those opportunities because of various different reasons, often than around language. Uh, 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 around uh, economic possibilities and so on and so forth. And as the kind of um, surrounding world uh, becomes much more present in indigenous contexts, there's also questions um, that occur within, and it happens in indigenous contexts around the world, about questions about identity, uh, about, um, you know, kind of hope for, for the future. Um, and it's been reflected uh, in, for instance, in the context in the Paraguayan Chaka, where over the last few years, and this is something that, you know, people talk about as being a change from previously, there's been uh, a wave of, of suicides amongst indigenous communities, young people in the Paraguayan Chaco. And so um, there's clearly still that need for the sharing of the hope of Jesus in these contexts. So in order to do that, we've been um, sharing and reflecting and um, all of us have kind of gone on to that electronics, virtual kind of types of meeting over the last couple of years. Um, but actually that, again, as, as I was sharing uh, a couple of days ago about the kind of, there's, the, there's been huge challenges in the pandemic, but actually one of the blessings within that was the ability to connect uh, in a much, uh, in, in a way that we were able to have conversations that perhaps we would never even have attempted. And so we're having conversations with indigenous uh, church leaders um, in the different contexts that I've been mentioning, um, asking them and discussing with them about their heart, their passion, the things that they want to engage with. Um, and as things have opened up and travel has become possible, it's also been able to, we've also been able to engage in dialogue with, um, with, uh, with uh, Indigenous leaders in their context. And we have the privilege, and Andy was there when this photo was taken, probably took the photo, um, of us engaging in some of that dialogue with, with, with people in the context. Um, and you can see Agustin, how I shared the photo there, helping us with the translation, because of course there's multiple languages going on in Indigenous contexts, and Spanish is not universal in all of them. Um, so as part of that listening, you know, um, we've also held uh, what we've called sort of pre-consultation. So actually listening to the voices of the people in the Laucanias, it's in Cholchol, um, and in the Chaco, Paraguay. And you can see the, the enthusiasm for wanting to express what are the kind of the key challenges, what are the key issues that indigenous peoples are facing? Um, and how, how, would, how would they want to respond? And within that, some of the themes that have emerged um, uh, we, we're bringing together, and we have the pleasure in just over a week's time <laughs> um, of of being able to gather, and and that's you know something that is just going to be a, a huge blessing to be able to get representatives from each of these different contexts that I've mentioned. So we're talking about people from uh, Mapuche, uh, from Araucanía. We're talking about en Southern Enclet peoples and Angaité from the Paraguayan Chaco, and the Wichí and Tol and Choroti from the Northern Argentine Chaco. 
to gather and to, to, to discuss around the different themes that they have made, they themselves have brought together. Uh, and these are some of the five themes that have been um, suggested, um, maybe given slightly fancier titles, but you know, the, the, the themes around Christian formation, what does it look like to do Christian formation in indigenous contexts, and particularly when there's the challenge around education and, and formal education, what does it look like um, to help um, an indigenous leadership be able to interact with the, the wider world and engage in mission in their own context, but also more widely as well. Um, the relationship between gospel and culture is always a challenge in mission, um, and that's uh, certainly the case amongst the indigenous peoples and the approach to some of the, um, the indigenous culture and how the gospel interacts with that and, and may or may not transform it is another thing that people wanted to, to talk about. Thinking about creation care, what we can learn from indigenous peoples there. Um, the relationship between state and indigenous peoples, because provision for indigenous peoples um, is often enshrined in law, but often they're not implemented in the context. And then, of course, the, the issue of unity uh, and how can we together, both locally in terms of political leaders, church, um, those within the community work together, or those communities work together, but also more widely, how can we um, um, bring a united voice to some of the challenges that are faced? So do please pray um, for, for that, which is happening from the 6th to the 10th of October, because emerging from that on the, um, to coincide with the day of the meeting of two cultures, which uh, used to be known as Columbus Day, <laughs> uh, but has been reshaped and renamed because, you know, it was literally, and it still is, a meeting between at least two cultures, um, that of the indigenous communities, the indigenous peoples who are already in Latin America, uh, and those who came from outside. And that those challenges are reflected there today. So there'll be a, a declaration coming out of this and a statement. And, and if, if you like, we pray a kind of a, a roadmap or, or, or a way map of the next steps to take as we walk in what we trust will be that good way, that, that the way that God has called us to walk together. Um, but yeah, so when I say together, there will be people from indigenous backgrounds, from Latino backgrounds and a few of us um, oddities from outside. Um, uh, the... Uh, that it would be churches, representative of churches and mission agencies of NGOs, uh, of the Anglican Church, you know, we have an Anglican heritage, but also the wider Christian body as well, as we seek to discern and work together um, in bringing change and bringing the gospel and uh, bringing the good news of Jesus into these contexts. Mm -hmm. Which leads me just to leave you with one challenge, uh, just to finish off. Um, will you come with us as we follow Jesus to the edges? Um, we believe that uh, but that's what we've been called to do, um, to to go into, to cross the lake, if you like, to go to these difficult places where it's uncomfortable, where it's challenging for those of us from the outside, at least often for those inside as well, um, uh, to go to follow Jesus, to, to, to make disciples in those contexts. And that may mean going physically. And I know some of the people in this room have gone and are going. Um, uh, but also that involves kind of praying for this. That also involves um, uh, giving towards it, involves um, uh, advocating um, for, for these different um, situations. And so, uh, and, and so we pray and we hope that, uh, that as you consider that challenge, that God will encourage and provoke you, uh, push you, call you uh, into those edges around the world uh, where he would have us go and serve. So, yeah, I uh, shall leave you there with the, that, that, that encouragement to go with Jesus with each other to the edges.